Welcome to the Money to the Masses podcast, putting you in control of your finances. One mic, two idiots, and according to our latest figures, three listeners. Here are your hosts, Damian Fay and Andy Leakes. Before we start, Andy, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to our podcast sponsors, Money Farm. Now, Money Farm are the largest digital wealth manager in Europe, and they create portfolios of ETS for their clients. They're incredibly cheap and ideal for somebody who's wanting to get into investing and perhaps for more experienced investors who don't actually want to run their own money anymore. Now, they will even offer to run the first £20,000 of any of our listeners' portfolio absolutely free if they enter the code MTTM20K into the website at moneyfarm.com. For more information, check out their website. But for now, Andy, let's get back on with the show. Hello and welcome to episode 138 of the Money to the Masses podcast with your resident expert, as always, Damien Fay and me, Andy Leakes. Damien, how are you doing on this hot and sweltering Friday afternoon? I'm good, Andy. I am, as you say, hot. If anybody could see me, I'm I'm almost sitting in the dark because uh, where I'm recording this, there's lots of windows, so I'm having to pull down the shutters and to keep the heat out and stop the greenhouse effect. So, yeah, I'm I'm shorts and t-shirt. I am dressed. I'm not sitting here naked or anything, and um, just trying to keep cool. I had to turn the fan off, didn't I? Andy told me off because I had a fan <laughs> on in the background. Damien, you can't have a fan on in the podcast. This recording. <laughs> I contemplated doing this podcast topless, but I thought I can't put that on your. Although this is an audio medium, I could not uh, allow you to see me with my it's top. A powerful off. image, Andy. <laughs> so, anyway, you're looking good. Well, um, uh, you you're looking healthy. It's almost like you've uh, you've started going to the gym or something. Well, let's let's not get carried away. I've been once. I've uh, <laughs> I, I've I was badgered by my wife to get back into going to the gym, and I haven't been for. When I say years, it literally is years. So, I've um I've, I've gone back to the um joined the gym and I'm I'm full of that enthusiasm that everybody has before they give up within nine weeks. Can we touch base in two months' time and see how we're doing? No, we'll gloss over it because because <laughs> <laughs> we all know what's happening there. We all know how this story ends. It always ends in the same way with regret and excuses. Actually, we were talking off pod. I've also started to. Uh, do the fitness and exercise and I've joined like a boxing gym I'm going to do some boxing so maybe we'll have that conversation in two months time and we'll both have a story to tell Uh, hopefully not it'll probably be injury related um yeah (laughs) because uh we that Andy and I are prone to ridiculous injuries when it comes to any attempt at sports and my infamous dad day hamstring um because it's a dad's race soon at school we'll go we'll get onto the money stuff shortly but yeah it's a dad's (laughs) race soon at school and I have to do my annual excuse as to why I won't run in the dad's race and uh, yeah, it's it, my child's um, sports day. So you just have to wear some really inappropriate footwear. I thought, I wonder what you were going to say there, Andy. I thought you were sort of venturing down the Mankini route. This is so, so really <laughs> inappropriate. So you can't do it, but no, so I don't do the dad's race. Anyway, Andy, what's going on with the money stuff this week? Funny you should say that. I was just about to ask you the same question. What are we doing? This week, right? I've got the usual three pieces that we're going to cover, and um, there's a, a really exciting offer uh, I've, I've got for people. It's something I've been doing in the background and um, talking to sort of third parties. And uh, cut a long story short, I'll come to it at the end of the podcast uh, to keep people obviously listening. Not that you would switch off, but uh, I'm going to give everybody a free uh, financial plan worth five hundred pounds. So. Everybody, I can hear you almost going, ooh, wait to the end of the pod. I'm going to talk to you more about that. So that's one piece. I want to talk about interest rates. Now, I'm going to touch upon this because we did we did a really good podcast recently on how interest rate rises affect the stock market. And I, I need to do uh, a little bit more, actually, on that, but more related to not the stock market. We've done that, but more about what happens to people who have savings and invest in things that are more low risk, like bonds. Because I was asked this by a journalist this week and uh, it actually the, the funny thing is is the god's honest truth I, ha- I had to answer this journalist query and it was all about the stock market bonds uh, savings accounts and how that interest rate rises might affect it and i actually went back and listened to our our podcast of me talking about the stock market impact 
so I could actually write my comment and send it off to him, uh, which I thought was very odd. It's the first time I've ever had to do that. It's like it was like googling your own brain, really, and sitting there thinking, "What, what, <laughs> yeah. what, what, what did I think about that?" So um, it was. I like that. It was. Like that. It wasn't me. Just it is a really good show, as they all are. Go back and listen to that one if you haven't, because as I explained shortly, it is very, very. Uh, relevant now uh, and it will be in the next sort of few years that all to do with interest rates the third piece i want to talk about is something to do with pensions advice and there's been something that's changed around who needs to have advice if they want to transfer and consolidate their pensions uh, as a result of the pension freedoms we had in the last couple of years certain people were excluded from being able to transfer their pensions consolidate them and cash them in and there's been a change so i just wanted to uh, let people know about that Great. What are we going to start with? Right, I'm going to start with the interest rate one because to give people some context as why this is important. Now, in the UK, the Bank of England hasn't raised interest rates for a decade now. So we're in a situation where there are a lot of people who own houses, uh, have mortgages, work in the mortgage industry or the finance industry or indeed invest and have never experienced an interest rate rise. And now interest rates impact lots of things within the economy. I'll be doing a, a a video actually shortly on Facebook that does uh, a nice tie up and explains how it all works. And as I mentioned in a recent podcast, I answered how an interest rate rise will impact the stock market. Now, I was obviously triggered something in Mark Carney's brain, the governor of the Bank of England, because in the last couple of weeks, what's happened is globally central banks have started to seemingly coordinate their patterns or their views on where their interest rates for their respective economies will go. So they're looking now more likely to start tightening them, so raising them. And I mentioned this previously, how that works. Effectively, you raise rates to try and slow down inflation and stop the economy overheating, but you lower them to do the opposite, to boost growth. So we're at the point now where it looks like the Bank of England and a number of other uh, central banks are going to be raising rates. America's already doing it, but they may do it a little bit faster. But we're in the position where everybody panicked because Mark Carney might shortly announce that interest rates might go up. Now, uh, without dating the podcast, we don't need to, I think, worry too much. I think we're talking about a 0.25 back to 0.5% type interest rate rise. But I was asked, what does that? Is this great news for savers? Is this the savers getting out the champagne corks and the party poppers and rejoicing at the fact that that means their savings rates are going to go up? Now, the answer is no, because the light at the end of the tunnel is still a hell of a long way off when it comes to seeing savings rates go up. We're still well and truly in that dark tunnel because as interest rates fell, then banks therefore lowered the rates that they were giving out to savers because don't forget they were actually receiving lower interest rates on the money that they had or investments accordingly so therefore they won't actually be generous and pay you any more than they're going to return because don't forget banks make money out of the differential they might take your money and give you a, a miserly interest rate but then they take that money and they lend it at a higher interest rate and that's how they make their profits now what that means is when the Bank of England cut the base rate uh, massively, then savings rates generally fell through the floor and you're pretty much getting paid next to nothing for saving your money. The key thing was that in the early days, inflation was quite low. So the real buying power of your money was, wasn't actually being eroded because inflation measures the cost of things rising in the economy. So the things you go and buy like food and petrol, it's a, uh, a an all-encompassing figure that gives you a general feel of how prices are moving up or down. Now, prices weren't moving up particularly fast. It didn't matter if your money was in a savings account that wasn't growing particularly uh, quickly either. But what's happened, inflation has picked up. So therefore, when you're getting next to nothing in your savings accounts, so you're getting 1%. When inflation's at nearly 3 you can see every year your money is actually effectively worth 2% less than it was the previous year. So what's happened is that people with savings are getting stung. They're finding life a little bit more difficult. Now, if rates start to go up, that doesn't actually mean that your saving rates will. And there's a number of reasons. Firstly, there's no compulsion by banks to raise rates. It's actually really led by supply and demand and competition within the savings market. If your savings account is somehow linked directly to the Bank of England base rate, then of course it will. But as most won't be, then you're, it's at the bank's discretion. So that's not necessarily good news. Now, also, there have been a lot of people that have fixed the, their savings into long-term fixed-rate deals to try and 
boost the rate they were getting because the longer you lock away your money, the better and more generous the interest rate that banks will give you. So, of course, if rates start to rise, then you're still locked into that three-year deal maybe and it means that if you try and pull your money out, there'll be probably some form of penalty. So, while rates going up may be good news for savers, in the long run, let's not get carried away. I think people are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Now, for things like moving up the investment spectrum, bonds, which are a, a relatively low risk form of investing, they're effectively loans to companies. So what happens is you buy a bond fund, for example, let's say you put £50,000 in it, then that fund will invest in lots of different bonds from lots of different companies, they're essentially loans, and you get paid the interest on that and that pays uh, an income from that bond fund and also don't forget that these these bonds are tradable so what happens is the capital value of that goes up now the point is that bond funds are kind of the next rung up the ladder on the risk spectrum with savings right at the bottom and equities at the top so it means that you've probably got less likelihood of you losing money but you've also got less likelihood of making money now the way it works is that you actually get a fixed often a fixed income, a fixed return on that bond uh, or that bond fund in general. So when rates start to go up in the economy, that makes that look relatively poor or le relatively worse value than it was before. And hence the name that bonds are typically called fixed income. So what happens is that bonds become less attractive, so people start to sell them, which means the capital value starts to fall. And the other thing is that as the economy starts to grow which is normally uh, what happens because when we're raising rates you wouldn't raise interest rates if the economy wasn't doing well then that also is generally negative for bonds so the summation of all of that is that interest rate rises are not necessarily good news in the short term for savers in the long run it will be a positive and we could hopefully get back to some form of normality for bonds it is pretty much a negative in the short term and the long term and it's the speed at which those rate rises occur and don't forget it's also the perception that the market has about what's going to happen to those rates because they start repricing assets so it may mean that this move in it globally by central banks to start raising rates might see the end of the bond market bull run the rally we've seen for a number of decades now has come to an end and if that happens then we could see quite a big sell-off. And in equities, we've already started seeing, uh, just as an aside, markets start to dip because the uh, the game is rigged in the stock market. All that extra money that comes from having low interest rates, etc., and lots of money printing ends up in risky assets like equities. And if it starts to be pulled away, people worry and, and prices start to fall. So that's just to give people an interesting dynamic of how interest rates will affect their savings accounts and low-risk investments. Beautiful. And it's always nice to hear a, a comment about money printing, because I always think about uh, watering that garden. Is that quantitative easing? It, it, quantitative it is. Easing? I, I love the fact you listen, Andy. You don't just all the time wander off and go to the toilet but in the middle of uh, my rants on the podcast, which you sometimes do. But um, you are actually listening. But yeah, it is. That money printing, they don't actually print money, but it's the, the same principle. What they do is actually they buy assets off of uh, large institutions typically which will be gilts and bonds and things like that and obviously they give them money and they keep the central banks hold those assets and there's money washing around in these banks and the theory is that they'll start spraying it around it's a bit like if you turn the tap on on the hose pipe and you start spraying around but it isn't always that simple um, because it's, to use that analogy it's north to the knot in the pipe in the hose pipe because banks aren't compelled to lend money to people so they don't have to sometimes they just like to sit on it anyway that's, that's another podcast. Good stuff. What have we got next, Amy? Right, the pension piece I just want to quickly do is that I've actually had people in the past contact me moaning about the fact they can't access their pensions. They're, we're talking about defined contribution pensions, so pensions like personal pensions or old-style personal pensions, which you're, you pay money into it and it builds up a pension pot and that pot of money you use to buy an income later in life if you want. That's very different to what's called a final salary or a defined benefit scheme which is one where you work for a company say and you work there for years and you pay uh, a contribution. It doesn't go into a pot that's designated as yours as such that you get given. What actually happens is that you get a promise 
of a pension based on a final salary in your number of years of service and those sorts of great pensions have largely disappeared and don't you can't really join them but there are people who still have them so they were barred from transferring these things without taking financial advice and cash therefore cashing in their pensions for the rest of us who have personal pensions what we could do is theoretically if you're over 55 you could consolidate your pensions and you could cash them in and go and buy a lamborghini as they claimed everyone would but what happened there was there was another niche of people who were stopped from accessing their personal pensions now like i say final salary pensions were already like, oh no no they, they're over here you've got to get financial advice before you do anything while if people with personal pension could just go and enact this consolidation and cash them in largely themselves people who had what were called guaranteed benefits that were of a size that was deemed to be more than £30,000, even though it was a personal pension, were stopped from just doing what they wanted with their pension. They had to get financial advice. Now, there was a problem because one of these guaranteed benefits could be something called guaranteed annuity rates. Now, if you get a pension pot, like a personal pension, and you go and when you've got your pot at the end, you're like happy and you sort of demob happy, you're going to retire, and you go to an insurance company and go, what are you going to give me for my pot of money? Now, what happens in the past was you used to be able to buy an annuity. And, I mean, there's lots more options now. You don't have to do that. You can keep the pot going and just draw money out of it. But you used to be able to buy an annuity, and that used to be the most popular option. But some of these plans in the past gave you guaranteed annuity option annuity rates. So they would say, right, do you know what, Damien? I'll guarantee you'll get 10% income. So if you give me 100 grand, I'll give you 10 grand a year for, for life. Now, of course, at the time, interest rates were high and that didn't seem a good deal. Where interest rates are so low now, that's an incredible deal. So those guaranteed annuity rates are really valuable. The thing is, not many pensions have them, but old, I'm talking old, like probably before two, year 2000, had these guaranteed annuity rates, or even further back than that. The problem is that if you transfer away or you consolidate your pensions or you cash them in, you lose that benefit and it could be very valuable. So the government said, if you've got any benefit like that, that's got a value of £30,000 or more, no, sorry, you can't transfer or do anything without getting that financial advisor to look at it. And of course, you have to pay for that financial advisor. Now, that's understandable. They're trying to protect people. And is that advice on the basis of them basically looking out for you or is it, have they got any sort of vested interest in that what what's the reason for them making that decision is it to look out for the, the people well the government didn't want people just cashing in their pensions and just taking the money because don't forget if they cash in their pensions and everyone did that then they're going to probably they might spend it all and then the state's going to have to fund them in retirement so they wanted to stop all that and so they encouraged people who had these good benefits not to be just cashing them in and also it's to protect them to stop people making bad decisions because obviously not everybody knows about pensions quite understandably so it's kind of a, a win-win because they, they've they're seeing it from both sides they've got a vested interest in them not cashing it in but also they can put it under the guise of looking out for the person yeah but what's interesting andy which is where yours is a good question what then happens is that how do you value the that benefit as being over thirty thousand pounds the value of that guaranteed annuity rate pension essentially and it's not that easy to work out the value of those rates. So what would happen is if people had a pension that was less than £30,000 in size, they were having to go and get financial advice, which could cost them thousands, to work out what the value of those benefits were anyway. And if that value of the benefit was ended up being less than £30,000, they've actually paid for advice that technically they didn't need legally. They weren't compelled by the legislation to take. So what it meant is that people who had tiny, tiny pension pots, as soon as they were seeing a flag on there that guaranteed annuity rates, they were being excluded for just cashing them in and taking the money and having to pay for financial advice. So what happened is the government has now realised that this isn't a good thing. So they've now, from April 2018, they've made a rule that's going to make it so the pension providers themselves have to send free valuations to people in, in that circumstance with guaranteed annuity rates the value of their benefit so they can see for themselves in black and white without paying anybody whether it's worth less than thirty thousand pounds and therefore if it is they can then just do as they want with the pension and therefore can choose to transfer or ultimately cash in their pension if they're over 55 without taking advice so it's actually a positive move it's it's 
enabling more people who should be able to access their pensions and enjoy those pension freedoms being able to. And I've had people write to me moaning about some of these caps of around £30,000 because they've fallen just shy or in this similar to this case, they've fallen either just below it but not sure whether their benefits valued above it. So there's a lot of confusion about the valuation of it. And I think this is a positive because it means it's starting to clear things up. Because as always, when things are announced and people... Uh, make these new rules that are meant to benefit consumers there's always some strange exemptions or strange cases and where people fall down the cracks and actually 12,000 people a year are being caught out by this so that isn't a small amount by any stretch of the imagination that is still quite a lot of people who were paying for financial advice who didn't need to or who were just not doing anything so the new rules will come in will make it easier for people to decide whether they need financial advice before they decide what they want to do with their own small pension pot so that is a positive okay just picking up on the dates there so april 2018 so what's going to happen say between now and then well like lots of these things it's slightly vague but the the government's hoping there's going to be some form of transitional arrangements made that will help people who are in that position now ahead of next year which i mean we're only sort of what's that 10 months away so it's kind of a watch this space these rules have only just been pretty much announced as i've just before i come onto this podcast so it's one of those things watch this space there should be something in place to help people who are sort of stuck in limbo until april 2018 before we move on andy i just wanted to quickly mention 8020 investor now 8020 investor is my diy investment service Do go and check it out. I empower and teach people how to invest their own money. The service provides data-driven fund tables. The data is driven by my own unique 8020 investor algorithm, which I created. You also get stop-loss alerts. You get research articles and insights. You get market commentaries, monthly commentaries, and DIY investment lessons. But you also get access to my £50,000 portfolio, which is a portfolio of my own money, which I run live on the site for members to see and it shows people how I use the service to uh, maximise my returns and in the first two years of doing so I turned £50,000 into £59,500 which is a a 19% return beating investment managers, professional fund managers, financial advisors, investment banks, passive trackers and the market. So everybody can have a free 30-day trial of 8020 investor and you can claim that by going to moneytothemasses.com and going and clicking on the 8020 investor hyperlink at the top of the page so go and try the service let me know what you think of it and i i know from the feedback that you're going to love it but for now on with the show Okay, Damien, listeners have been waiting with bated breath. They've tuned in to our podcast, heard the little teaser at the beginning. They've gone through all the fantastic advice you've been giving over the last 25 minutes. And now they want something that you're going to give them, a free financial plan. Yeah. Now, what this this came about because I do a lot of, talk to lots of companies, third parties and large institutions who, who about their propositions and about money to the masses etc and what they can do for the people who listen and read what i say and write so what happened is that i I was approached by a company called vouched for now vouched for uh just like a company called unbiased which i think we've mentioned before which what they do is they are essentially the equivalent of what's the hotel review site andy i've forgotten it's gone from my mind uh trip advisor trip uh, trip advisor no andy trip advisor see everyone's listening to the podcast now thinking how did he forget trip advisor but trip advisor they are essentially the trip advisor of the financial advice world so what they do is you go on there if you want to find a financial advisor you can go on there and vouch for will give you suggestions of advisors based on what sort of advice you want maybe mortgage pension or just generic advice of everything holistic and they were actually the user rating. So you could find a, a financial advisor near you, Andy, that may have very good user ratings in reviews, and you can read those, and it'll make a recommendation of that person. So it's a site that has grown over the years, and it's a way of uh, connecting people with financial advisors. Now, one of the things that is very interesting, what I do is give uh, essentially free uh, advice and guidance to people about money, and I'm, I'm very keen about people seeking advice when they need it that's 
professional financial advice, speaking to an advisor when they need it, and also doing it themselves when they don't need to. And that's one of the things people struggle with, money to the masses. A lot of it is all about helping people, empower them, but also steer them when they need a bit of help and speak to a financial advisor. Now, what's happened is I've agreed with this company vouched for to they will provide a limited number of free uh, there's 500 free financial plans worth 500 pounds for people who listen to the money to the masses podcast or read the money to the masses website and what that actually means is if you go on to money to the masses.com forward slash podcast you'll find out about it there and how you can claim one and what it is you go on there and you put in some information and it actually goes through to a financial advisor via vouched for uh, who will write a financial plan an overview for you now i was very particular and i asked them to send me a copy of one of these plans one that had been done to see whether it was any good because obviously there's no point doing it if it's not really worth the paper it's printed on and i was pleasantly surprised how good it was and what it does it gives people a steer of what they should be doing and of course then they are free to choose to engage with that financial advisor if they want to who can help them with the um, suggestions that they've made and of course they don't have to it's actually one of the key things that about it the reason I, I i liked it there was no obligation under anybody's part to do anything so really what it does is it gives you a health check and looks and suggests things that you should be doing and things you might want to review get advice on and i was pleasantly surprised about how how good they were and actually yes i i, I can see the value is definitely worth 500 pounds because don't forget that's taken an advisor a number of hours and i've spoken independently to some financial advisors around the country who do these plans and it does take them quite a lot of time to do so i would recommend that people take advantage of it if they if, if they want to because I, I i do wonder how long it can actually last because it, it's um, taken a lot of time for these advisors to do it so yeah it's a great idea free financial plans worth 500 pounds to anybody who goes to money to the masses.com forward slash podcast now there is no compulsion for you to do anything with the financial advisor who sends you the plan indeed you could take it and go to another financial advisor or you could just take it and keep it and put it in the uh on top of the wardrobe or whatever but it's a very good offer it's a limited one and actually i haven't looked at it i do think it offers a lot of value great and just to be clear this is a human being that you're going to be interacting with or at least at the first initial stages this isn't a computer this isn't an algorithm that's just going to spit out some generic stuff this is a human being that's going through line by line looking at your personal details and giving you at least a summary a starting point with which to uh, to, to go from and, it, and it's your choice then to to take that and speak to them or, or take it elsewhere yeah i mean particularly if you've got things that are like you say pensions or tax plan or anything that you you just want to have looked at then it's definitely a, a very good starting point to be able to get you pointed in the right direction and what you need to do and of course that's where the value is is if you've got something that you might want that you know is going to require uh, some human talking or human understanding and, and perception i mean you can get a lot you can do a lot with um financial planning with very simple cases that can be automated and stuff like that but it's great when you have something that can have somebody at the other end uh who's actually looking at things and funny enough this is something that i've pondered about building anyway in 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 for money to the masses whether there's something we could do along these lines directly ourselves because what people don't understand who work in finance money to the masses is built upon the idea that i give away everything and the content and the knowledge and it, if you give stuff away then people actually understand where, you, where you're coming from your knowledge and trust you whereas what happens in the finance world it, they always want to you to pay them something before they'll give it to you and it's always a barrier for people and there's always again like this idea we were talking about where people have been could be charged for something and they didn't ultimately need advice like we were sort of alluding to on the previous pension piece we did so this is one of the rare cases where it seems that actually the finance world has cottoned on to the idea that if they give something away for free then actually people will see the value of the financial advice and they will engage with it if they need financial advice because it's a good way of actually judging whether you need advice or not so yes go and have a look at it and i, I think it's something that's really good i don't know how long it will last but obviously it's, it's a first come first served 
idea. It's brilliant. I mean, if you if you think about it, the rest of sort of retail is built upon a try before you buy type scenario. You know, you're often given free tasters and freebies and try this. And, and the idea is you give it a little bit for free. People like it, they engage with it, and then they want to buy into it. I mean, you, how many times have you been to a supermarket and there's a new cheese on offer or there's a new drink on offer? You try before you buy. It's the same thing. And it's going to work, I think. Yeah, I think it will do. And I think I, I'm always going around talking to companies and i say to them do you know what you need to do you just need to give away what you do and of course the horror on their faces because that's their usp what i give it away and people don't realize that by doing that you can build great businesses it takes a long time it is a long it would be a slow journey but the point at which you can um ultimately start to try and make money and turn it things into a business it's will be self-fulfilling now on that note actually reminds me go to the one giant leap podcast group on facebook and if you can find details of it at one giant leap and we're we're brainstorming people's ideas and there's some people doing some fantastic things on there and they're following their passion and one of the women on there has got a passion for cruising uh, going on cruise liners and i'm going to do a video around that at some point because she's just pursuing it and she goes on it she loves it she's so passionate about it but it's i think it's got the potential to be a, a fantastic idea and in the long run a really good business and I'm going to explain as to why that is all she has to concentrate on is just talking about and writing about what she loves which is going on on cruises and doing things and about what to look out for and all that sort of stuff and she could actually build a very big and successful business off the back of it because about it's all about showing her knowledge and passion and building influence but that's something for another day if you want to get into the idea about starting your own business and things like that then you'll find that group interesting we share some ideas on there and we do brainstorm people's passions because i really want people out there in an entrepreneurial way to start following these passions if you don't have to make money from day one that's the important thing it's all about um just doing something you enjoy great and actually on that following your passion i met um Someone who's taken the internet by storm in recent weeks. I don't know if you've heard of him. Mr. Doodle. You heard of Mr. Doodle? I've only heard of Mr. Doodle, Andy, because we had a conversation. About, I saw an internet video of this guy, and I really want to get him on the One Giant Leap podcast. But tell people who he is, because this is interesting. Mr. Doodle is a guy that lives in Kent, and uh, he spent his youth basically doodling and drawing and basically being told he wasn't good enough and um he's sort of he's a quirky character and he started doing stuff in the east end of london where there was sort of buildings and things that were a little bit downtrodden and weren't looking great and he went and spoke to the owners and said look i doodle this is what i do have a look at it would you mind if i sort of displayed my art on on your properties and things and anyway people loved it and it's gone from strength to strength and he's all over the internet at the moment because there are people that are commissioning him to do all sorts of things like you know feature walls on properties and doodle their cars i've seen that i mean he yes. seriously is the point that i i want to get him we, we talked about it months ago and he's not too far from here i hope that i'd be able to get him because obviously he's getting to the point now he's blowing up so big because he is just um, he's such a unique talent, but it's something he loves, and I, I love it. So yeah, one of the latest videos on YouTube has over 34 million hits, I think. So oh. this isn't a guy that's just uh, that's just just getting a few thousand hits. He is global at the moment, and uh, yeah, he's gonna you're gonna hear about him more, I think. Good. And on that successful note, Andy, I think that's it for this week. Don't forget to review the podcast. Please review the podcast. Um, if you're listening to this and you haven't left a review. Please do so because I'd love to see the reviews get to over 100 because I don't understand how it's not over 100 because if only a fraction of you actually left a review then we would get there very quickly. So please make my day and do so. If you don't know how to do it, if you're on your phone now, if you go into the podcast app on your phone and you search, you have to search Money to the Masses and then you find the podcast and click on it that way, then you can leave a review. It seems a very backward way of doing it, but you can't listen to a podcast, it seems, on iTunes or via the podcast app and, and leave a review to the one you're listening to. It never used to be that way. It may have changed, but I don't think it does. So use that method, search, then you can sit there and add a, a review. And please do. And if you want to get in touch, it's Twitter at... So what am I talking about? If you want to get in touch on Twitter, it is Damien... No, it's not. It's not even that. Sorry. If you want to get in touch on Twitter, I'm, it's the heat. I think I'm going to pass out. If you, Do want you know to... what, a good editor, a good editor would take all of that out. But just for just for shits and giggles, I'm going to keep it in. No, I can't say shits and giggles. You've said it now. Leave that. 
Money to the masses with the number two is the Twitter handle. And as always, you can get hold of me or Damien at moneytothemasses.com or via the email of podcast at moneytothemasses.com. That's it, Andy. I think we're done. At least you can see now why I always stuff up the email addresses and Twitter handles. <laughs> I'm glad you took, you took on the challenge this week. Okay, until next week. Until next week, Andy. Don't forget to claim your free copy of Damien's best-selling book, The 30-Day Money Plan. Sort your finances in just five minutes a day, worth $4.99. Just go to moneytothemasses.com slash podcast to find out how. 